County. All right, now let's go to Pipeline where Jeff Mogire has been camping there as well just to give us perspective of what is taking place at that particular area. Jeff? How long do we have? Well, we are on pipeline, and uh, this is the situation right now. I see the military have arrived here with three vehicles of the military. I don't know if they are passing or they're here to calm the situation down, but I see there's a lorry just up front, and there's two land cruisers of military officers here. Probably, I think they are passing, and they're standing watch just in case of anything. And uh, the situation has not changed here in pipeline. Now, what the situation that has, I've seen so far, residents of this area of pipeline, as police officers continue to lob tear gas to residential area, they're trying to use water uh, to ensure that uh, they, are, they, they, they are pouring water on uh, tear gas canisters on this side. So those are police officers on, that, on, the, other side, on, the, on, the, on the other side of pipeline residential area. This is the first group. There's another group that, up there. They have been lobbing tear gas to the residential area and uh, to disperse people, which is clearly wrong because that there could be children in there. And uh, now they are trying to push the protesters who are hiding in there, inside, further inside. But at the end of the day, lobbing tear gas to residential area does not really look good. But so far, so good. This outer ring road remains impassable because the protesters on the other far end of Quarry blocked the road. Officers went there, they opened it, they still came back to the road and blocked it. So the officers who are here with their water can and, and Indian numbers, they're trying to ensure that the protesters who have gone to the residential area, they don't come back from pipeline. So the other side of further, things remain cool, but they're standing by watching on what happens. Earlier, police officers lobbed tear gas cancer to the other side as well. And uh, I saw some parents complain that they have kids in their houses and they don't want canisters or tear gas canisters lobbed into that area. And the police officers kind of took it slow from the other side. So we're waiting to see how things uh, pan out. But so far, so good. There's a tire lit up there uh, by protesters uh, from the other side to ensure that the vehicles which are using the service lane, they cannot use the service lane to come this way into pipeline. So the situation remains tense. Some, some, so many people stuck within a Tajma roundabout about because they can't go home. The road is impassable to outer ring and even getting into pipeline. They're also afraid of what might happen to them because some of them are coming from work and they meet police officers who are trying to chase protesters away. And uh, that confrontation is what probably they might be avoiding so far so good. But right here at pipeline, things remain chaotic. Roads are impassable. Businesses closed down. Losses are being uh, counted here by business people who, are, who, who work around this area. So it's been a war zone since morning. Uh, police officers running up and down and running battles with the protesters. And at the end of the day, nothing is clearly working. But now what has happened lately to this point <laughs> is that police officers have found themselves in the middle of protesters. From the far end of Tajmo, there are protesters who are advancing this way into Outer Ring Road. Inside pipeline, there are protesters charging from the inside residential areas. On the other side, they are, they are, they are standing, watching with, uh, standing by against the police officer. They are standing their ground on the other side. The police have stood their ground from this side. So on the other side of Kuare, protesters as well are charging from the other side down there up Outer Ring Road. So we don't know how this, this one is going to pan out, but we are waiting to see what happens. But I've seen residents here use water, pouring uh, tear gas canisters with some water to cool it down. But probably that is a desperate, a desperate uh, way of trying to stop things from working. But I hope that police officers can really stop from uh, lobbing tear gas to residential areas or they can go in there if they want to get the protesters one on one. But right here at the outer ring road, things remain chaotic. The roads are impassable. Even the cars which are coming, they are forced all the time to make a U-turn and go back and find another way of accessing the outer ring road.
Um, and as we can see uh, in that area, we are looking at residential area. It's a residential area where houses, you can see uh, people are in their houses and also the clothes have been hung even outside. So at the end of the day, when it comes to um, how the police have been handling this issue, as you've mentioned, um, it, it, it's not a right. And according to uh, what you have said, they are lobbing tear gas canisters into the residential areas. And when you look at the schools around that area, what is the situation um, uh, of the schools around that area? Are there any uh, children who are coming from school or did, did any children go to school today as you uh, were maybe engaging with the locals in that area. I have been, uh, I've not seen any school going children coming out of school because probably there was, there could have been a, a local warning for parents to remain home with their children because schools within pipeline are within pipeline, in the deeper side of pipeline. So probably if police could advance while lobbying tear gas into those residential areas, those schools which are nearby, it could have been chaotic and dramatic at the end of the day, but I've not seen school-going children coming out or coming, going home. I've not seen any so far so good. Probably they have stayed away. And uh, for the residential areas like this one here, the residents of this area, they are still remaining on those balconies, watching all day long. I've been here since one... Uh, PM, I've seen them stand there, watch police officers trying to use water cannon, they run back to the houses and they come back out. On the other side of there, you can see in the far end up there, there's a running battle between police officers and uh, protesters. So that is another chaotic area around Taj Mall. So, so far so good. Things don't really look good here. And the people who have been working the whole day somewhere else can't get home. And the people who live here can't stay in the house peacefully because of the, how the tear gas canisters are exploding out here. And that one could be traumatic uh, to the kids or the children around this area. Calvin. Jeff, thank you so much for that update. And we'll be getting back to you uh, to give us more even as the, uh, the, the developments keep on.